As little Riley lay unconscious, kept alive only by machines, her parents, Rob and Katrine Swander, felt helpless. The life-threatening condition sepsis, when the body's response to an infection damages its own tissues, had left their precious 18-month-old daughter teetering on the brink of death. She needed a liver transplant, and quickly. The first sign of trouble came when Katrine was 20 weeks pregnant. The second time mom was told a cyst-like structure was growing inside her baby girl's abdomen, and doctors had no idea why. They told her that it could be a serious disease or nothing. They really didn't have any answers. Immediately after Riley was welcomed into the world, the newborn was whisked away for a barrage of tests. And at just 32 days old, she underwent surgery to confirm a devastating diagnosis. The infant had Bilaria atresia, a rare condition that blocks bile ducts around the liver. Surgeons were able to repair some of the damage after telling Riley's parents there was a huge chance the surgery wouldn't work, Katrine says. However, that appeared to be the end of the good news for the Swanders. Unable to swallow, Riley was given a feeding tube and was continuously in and out of the hospital with infections. Then, at 18 months old, she battled her first bout of sepsis due to a deadly infection around her liver. Sepsis is the body's life-threatening response to infection that can lead to tissue damage, organ failure, and even death. It continued to strike the baby's weak body until her liver could no longer cope with the stress. Riley was placed on the transplant list, and the family prepared for the possibility of a long wait. But just two weeks later, they received the call. A match had been secured. The baby was whisked into the operating room, but the surgery didn't go as planned. Her body was rejecting the new liver, and a few days later, she was on life support. We were just devastated. We didn't know what would happen, Katrine says. I guess we were trying to be realistic. We knew she needed another liver to survive. As the days went by, Katrine would constantly ask doctors for any updates on her daughter's condition. They just couldn't tell us anything positive, the mom says. At one point, we were told to not think about tomorrow and to just focus on the next hour. You know, things aren't good when they say that. But Riley continued to fight for her life, and Rob and Katrine put their hands up to be live donors. They were at the point where they would give anything to save her. The pair went in for testing, and Rob was a match. Accepting Rob's selfless offer, surgeons planned to resect part of his liver to transplant into his little daughter, surgery that's possible when the recipient is a child. But the operation is considered extremely risky, and is usually performed only in extreme cases when a donor from a deceased person cannot be found. He was taken to Ronald McDonald House in preparation for surgery the next day. But just after he arrived, he received a call. They had found another liver for Riley from a deceased donor. Grateful her husband no longer had to go under the knife, Katrine was still anxious about Riley's operation. It was such a big and important surgery, says Katrine, who was acutely aware of the first failed transplant. Seeing her hooked up to so many machines, we couldn't think about what would happen if things didn't go our way. Holding her daughter's favorite stuffed toy, Katrine paced the hospital corridor while their baby underwent the second transplant surgery. I was holding onto that toy so tight I put a hole in it, she says. When the surgeons emerged, Katrine instantly knew her daughter was okay. We could just read on their faces that this time it had gone so much better, she said explaining that the liver was a perfect match and Riley was doing well. I will never forget the look on their faces. I could feel the joy from the head surgeon's face. I can still feel the joy. Two months later, Riley was finally allowed home. Looking at her, you wouldn't know everything she's been through, Katrine says, adding that her daughter's a little daredevil who loves dancing with her big brother Liam, who's five. Parents will never forget the gift Riley's donor gave her, nor will they forget the organ donated by the first person. Every year on the anniversary of the transplant, the parents plan on honoring both donors, with special thanks to the person who saved their daughter's life. Organ donors are absolute heroes. A complete stranger has given Riley a whole life, and doing that for someone you don't know, that's really special.